So I want to thank everyone for joining us today for this uh, virtual session. My name is Andrea Kraus, and I am the Community Development Manager at Zeitgeist. Um, at Zeitgeist, we like to open our gatherings by taking a moment to collectively acknowledge that Zeitgeist and the area that we call the Twin Ports is built on land that was in originally Anishinaabe at King and is home to the Anishinaabe, the original stewards of this territory. The land was ceded by the Anishinaabe in the 1854 Treaty of La Pointe, and historically, and today, it holds great significance for Indigenous peoples. We're committed to uplifting the name of these lands and the community members from the nations who reside alongside of us. While this land acknowledgement is not enough, it is an important social justice and decolonizing practice that promotes a change in our way of seeing that many of us are settlers and visitors on indigenous land. So welcome everyone to this virtual session about Embracing Winter, a presentation about the programs, opportunities created by Duluth Parks and Rec to help you get out and stay active during the winter, maybe even try a new winter activity. This event is part of Zeitgeist annual Winter Bike Week, a week dedicated to celebrating and promoting active living, um, even beyond biking for all members of our community. So I'll just mention, in addition to today's discussion, we're hosting virtual events through virtual and in-person events throughout this week and coming weekend. Um, please visit our website to register and learn more about those events. Um, and we'll also be offering uh, prizes and drawings for those who do participate and join us for any of these virtual or in-person sessions. So make sure that you um, register and join us. We hope to see you on a screen or in person with us. Um, we're all pretty familiar with online platforms at this point, but I'll just ask that uh, you keep yourself muted unless you have a question. Um, and you're welcome to ask any questions in the chat box. Uh, feel free to type them in at any point. Otherwise, we can also field some of those questions at the end of the session, or Sam will just check in as, as he's going and as it seems appropriate. So um, yeah, thank you for being here. And I want to introduce our presenter today, Sam Worley, a recreational specialist and outdoor and winter enthusiastic enthusiast enthusiast with um, Duluth Parks and Rec Department. Um, Sam has dedicated many hours to working um, and helping people stay active outdoors. And if you joined the fun at Cold Front this past weekend, you have seen some of the work that he has been a part of. Um, and so today, Sam's gonna share a little bit more about some of the programs, partnerships, equipment, ways that we can get outdoors and embrace active lifestyles in these long and cold Northland winters. So um, I'll stop sharing my screen here for a second and switch over to slides. And uh, thank you so much for being here, Sam. Awesome, thank you, Andrea. Can you hear me okay? Okay, you'd think we'd have this all figured out by now, but there's always a couple of hiccups. So um, awesome. As Andrea mentioned, my name is Sam Worley. I work with Duluth Parks and Recreation. Um, as part of Winter Bike Week, really excited to be a part of this uh, whole kind of week long series of events again, and just provide some insight or some information or be a resource for folks to um, get introduced some, to some activities across Duluth that you might be familiar with, but are looking for more information, or if you're looking for something new to try and just kind of looking to see where to start or how to get involved. Um, if you heard Andrea mention Cold Front, that was a big event we had this past weekend uh, down at Bayfront Park where we did dog sledding for kids. Uh, kids could try cross-country skiing. There's a big loose sledding hill, um, kind of a snow obstacle course. So if you were there, great. Thank you for coming out. Uh, if you missed it, uh, stay tuned for next year and we'll see you out there. Um, and as Andrea mentioned as well, if you have questions throughout uh, the presentation, feel free to put them in the chat uh, or just kind of buzz in and unmute yourself and, and uh, toss it over um, and we'll get things answered and happy to, to provide as much information as I can. Um, 
But as we get started, kind of what we're going to cover tonight is just broadly kind of a, from a bird's eye view, just some basic tips or ideas as, as we think about how to enjoy winter, or maybe just start to experience winter a little bit more outdoors. It can take a while to begin to enjoy it, but that's kind of the point is to get out there and try things and, and find ways to, to become more comfortable or find ways to enjoy the outdoors in the winter. Uh, and then I'll focus on some parks and rec specific things. So I'll give you some insight into some of the things we offer, whether that's equipment or programs or partnerships that we uh, are part of that can get people outside and active. Um, a lot of people know Duluth Birth's outdoor spaces and a lot of people visit our parks and trails, um, but you may not know that we offer a lot of ways to help get people get out there and involved or engaged in those spaces. Um, if you maybe don't have the experience or the equipment or the knowledge, we're uh, coming out with more and more ways to really welcome people into those spaces and, and uh, experience them on like a, you know, square one basis, really intro level heights or intro level, um, you know, ice skating opportunities, things like that. Um, so I'm uh, excited to share some of that later on, but uh, Andrea, feel free to click through there. Yeah, so just on our main screen here, Embracing Winter is what we'll talk about. Uh, we'll talk about what is on the screen here, this sled shed. Uh, we started those last winter um, and continue them this winter have been really popular. So there's free chances to go sledding out in a few different parks across town. Uh, we kind of replace sleds as they get broken or get lost, which can happen, we'll go replace them. Um, but we'll chat about that one a little bit later. So feel free to jump to the next slide there. All right. Um, so it says ways to get out there. Uh, you know, getting outside in the winter um, can be a little intimidating if you're not familiar with being outside, if you're not comfortable with the cold, or maybe aren't from this area, especially when it gets dark so early. Um, and so are uh, just a couple of kind of general pointers or things to keep in mind is to start small. You know, um, a lot of the things that we, you know, we had at cold front to these really big uh, activities, you know, cross country skiing or dog sledding or all these really big things that it's kind of hard to get involved in. Um, Getting outside and becoming comfortable with winter can be as simple as spending a couple more minutes per day outside, whether that's walking to get the mail or spending time on your block or on your street um, or chatting slash commiserating with your neighbors about how cold it is, that kind of thing. Um, there's some ways that you can really get involved outside that aren't uh, as intense or, or as they may seem. Uh, couple other tips for dealing with cold weather. Uh, plan ahead if you know you're gonna be outside for an extended amount of time in the cold. Uh, think about where you'll be going, what the weather is, check the forecast. It can change uh, rapidly as we saw uh, over the past couple of days. It feels like spring out today, but uh, not so, not so, uh, not similar to the, or to the last week when it was, you know, below zero for multiple days at a time. Um, a big piece of spending time outdoors in the winter is uh, dressing appropriately. And so there's lots of great resources and kind of learning the strategies or, or how to dress so that you can be comfortable. A lot of that has to do with the materials you're wearing and dressing in layers so that you can kind of help your body regulate your temperature depending on what kind of activity you're doing. If it's uh, you know low activity, high activity, or low energy, high energy. Um, and the last little tip here just says move. You can kind of plan ahead as you're getting outside, if you know you're going to be active and moving and, you know, walking at a good clip or trying something like skiing or something like that, that's really going to get your heart rate up. Um, plan ahead to be able to lose a layer, but also know that your body can help keep you warm when it's cold if we get moving a little bit. Uh, last couple of ones on the ways to get out there is uh, sharing experience with others. And that can just be within your own household or your own neighborhood um, or seeking out other groups that have more experience. Um, or more knowledge, um, you know, sharing time together, you know, has been a little short. Uh, the last couple of years, we haven't been able to do as much, um, but being able to, to experience and, and share something outdoors with others um, can take some of that uh, discomfort in new situations out of the equation. And uh, kind of to that point, uh, if you want to get involved in something, but you don't really know how or don't have the knowledge or experience, um, do a little homework or call or email me and I can point you in, in the direction of, of a group or someone who might have more knowledge or experience. Um, there's a lot of people that enjoy being out, outside in the winter and doing a variety of different activities in town. So if there's something you wanna try seeking those uh, people and those groups out, um, people are more than willing to share information and, and help you get involved if you have questions. I'll jump to the next one there. 
All right, this is just kind of some of the uh, similar information as the last slide. I'm just thinking about ways to stay active. Um, you know, there's a lot of groups that walk in the winter. You know, Winter Bike Week has had a lot of great acti or, uh, activities and sessions this week and will continue uh, highlighting um, staying active in the winter. But if you don't have those types of opportunities or it's not your interest or not, you're not in a position to do that, um, something as simple as walking can be a great way to um, kind of find new things about winter to interact with and enjoy. A um, couple of things I like to do if you or have a, you know, a block that you walk or just down your driveway or something like that, uh, keep an eye out for some changes. Winter is an amazing time to, to keep your eyes open outside if you're able to, um, and notice some things that change, you know, hour to hour, day to day. Uh, animal tracks are great to look for in the winter. They change all the time. There's probably a lot more than you ever realize. Um, or just look for other changes uh, down your street, whether it's what the snow looks like. Is there snow sitting on the trees that day or is it to go blown off by a windy, uh, a windy storm that came through? Lots of changes happen this time of year. It's fun to kind of keep track and use that as a, a checkpoint to go check back on every other every day or every week um, and see what's different. Uh, and that middle one is just, uh, that's a good perspective thing is view shoveling as a workout. If you're having to do some, some snow removal, um, great way to get our heart rate up, get some exercise in, um, and a good chance to connect if you have neighbors that are also out uh, helping out or giving a helping hand or getting a helping hand or again, uh, complaining with your neighbors about how much snow we've gotten is also a good, uh, good way to spend some time outdoors in the winter. Let's go ahead and go to that next one. All right, um, so next few slides, I'm just gonna highlight, you know, some things through Parks and Rec that we offer um, and some information about our, our programs. Um, you know, some people know that we have we offer programs within Parks and Rec, and a lot of people don't. We're pretty um, new to offering a lot of these new types of programs and activities uh, that we are, and we're continually trying to expand and, and reach new audiences and get more people involved in ways that maybe they didn't know uh, that Parks and Rec did or things that we haven't offered in the past. Um, so this, this picture on the slide on the right side there is the cover of our winter spring uh, brochure of our program guide. So that's uh, programs in January through April. So that's what we're in right now. So within that guide, you would find things like information on our uh, ice skating at Bayfront Park. And there was a page in there about cold front. And you'll see different uh, programs offered, whether it's snowshoeing or um, uh, there's some cross-country skiing lessons and things like that. So just a variety of programs for all ages. There's some just for youth. There's youth and family programs. There's senior programs, a little bit of everything um, for all ages. And so really trying to, to educate people and, and point them in that direction to check out that program guide and ask questions on things you see, because uh, there's a lot of new things that we're hoping to engage people in. Um, this can be found on our website along with uh, information on our fee assistance program. So if uh, anyone watching this or anyone you know would love to get involved in these types of things, but um, um, paying or, or there's a barrier that has to do with uh, financial situations, we have a fee assistance program that we can um, get people involved. So uh, there's information on that. There's an application or questions can come right to me. Um, so if there's a way that we can get people involved in th these things, uh, we will through our fee assistance program. Um, we also have a parks calendar on our website that has a lot of different information on it of what's going on. It's fun to look ahead and kind of see what's upcoming in the next weeks and months, so you can keep an eye on that. Um, so all of that information is at our website, DuluthMN.gov slash parks. Uh, we also do uh, a lot of social media, and so we put up updates on programs or things to look forward to in the next few weeks on our Facebook and Instagram pages. Uh, but our website has just about everything. It can be a little confusing to navigate. Um, so if you have questions on that, always feel free to reach out. Um, feel free to go to the next slide there, Andrea, and we'll kind of talk about what types of things you can do with parks this winter. So this slide has a lot of information on it. Uh, just kind of a broad range of activities that uh, we can either help you get involved in in a specific Parks and Rec program, or we can definitely help you get information on other ways to participate. Um, so these are some broad categories I'll run through pretty quickly. So a really popular hobby in the winter for a lot of folks 
is hiking and snowshoeing. So it's still utilizing our trail resources in town in, in a few different ways. Um, the ones that we offer through parks specifically, so you can sign up for a, a guided hike with us in a few of these categories where we'll have a staff person there, we'll provide snowshoes and headlamps if it's in the evening, um, might be some hot chocolate involved, um, is a great way to kind of meet people that are looking for similar things and, and trying to get out with the group um, in maybe in a new location or a new trail that you aren't quite sure where you're supposed to meet or where you can go. Um, this is a great way to get to know more spaces across town. So we have some night hikes, which either happen um, by headlamp or we'll, we'll line a couple up um, with full moons. And so we hike by the moonlight. Uh, we have a couple of guided snowshoe hikes coming up, which just happened in various parts across town. Women Hike Duluth is a group that meets monthly um, that's a free opportunity. Um, usually gets a pretty good turnout and rotates to different trail sections across town year round. And then our 55 plus snowshoe socials. So those are uh, new this winter. Um, so we had a, a successful senior hikes program over the summer uh, and that's transitioned into a snowshoeing program this, uh, this winter. And so those are hikes for specifically 55 plus to meet up with a staff and uh, see some new places. Those ones, um, you know, we have a variety of terrain and different difficulty of trail that we that we cover for all those programs, but there are details on that in our brochure. Uh, the next one down from there is ice skating. So uh, a favorite pastime for many, uh, but if you haven't ice skated before or aren't from the area, um, it can be a little tricky on how to get involved. Um, and it's not the easiest thing to learn, uh, but we do have lots of opportunities for people to get involved in skating. One of our main ones is uh, down at Bayfront Family Center, so Bayfront Park. Uh, we have an ice rink there that we maintain. Um, we have a family center that's open Monday through Friday, 3 to 7 p.m., Saturday from 12 to 7, and Sunday from 12 to 4. Um, and that's those are open hours. The rink is available, you know, 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., uh, but those hours are the hours that the family center is open as a warming house. We also have some skates available there for free to borrow. So if you just want to give it a try, uh, we have a kind of a limited range of sizes there, but it's a great place to go. Uh, just get some skates on, see how it feels. Uh, there's a concession stand there with some hot chocolate and snacks and things like that. But um, definitely nice to have a warm place to, to get skates on and off. Um, we have some other ice rinks across town. You know, a lot of the, the rinks in town are managed by uh, the Duluth Amateur Hockey Association or DAHA. Um, so at a lot of different parks, there's uh, ice rinks that are specifically have, you know, hockey boards and a lot of times of youth practices and games and stuff like that. But all of those rinks also do, all those sites do have a pleasure rink, which is just kind of an open area of the ground that's flooded and maintained just for folks to skate on without playing hockey, just so we can have an area for hockey players and an area for people that are just skating for fun. Um, there is a, a website or a, a page on the park's website now that's an interactive map with all the ice rinks. Um, in, uh, in Duluth highlighted. And there's also information on when there's um, youth tournaments on what weekends and what times the, the warming houses are open at those places. So that's new this year, some really good information to get people uh, some, some information on what rinks are open, where you can skate when and things like that. Um, so that is on the park's website, kind of right in the middle of the page, there's a link that says outdoor ice rinks. Um, and you can click on that link on our main parks page. Um, as I mentioned before, our sled sheds have been very popular this year. So that uh, that's a project we started, kind of was born from COVID. We saw uh, that happening in a couple other places around the state and around the country and thought that'd be a great thing to add to Duluth Parks. Um, so if you go to tomorrow or this weekend, or maybe uh, when it's beautiful and 36 degrees like it was today, if you go to Leaf Erickson Park, Lincoln Park, Portland Square, Bayfront Park or Merritt Park, there are giant purple sled sheds like you saw in that first slide with several sleds in, in each. Um, and that's a great way to just to go have fun without having to plan ahead too much. Don't have to find a sled or have a sled. You can just go to the, one of those places and have some fun. Uh, we've seen all kinds of uh, people using those. Uh, I've, I've seen dogs going down some of the sleds this year. Um, so lots of people are having a lot of fun. Um, not only for kids, uh, I think what I've heard from the most from the sled sheds are adults who just happen across them that were a little taken by surprise on the, how much fun a spontaneous sledding session could be. 
Uh, last couple things on this slide, you know, cross country skiing is really popular in town, uh, but it takes a little bit to get involved with. There's some equipment needs um, and just some kind of knowledge of the area or where to go, or maybe some skills that, that are needed, um, as well as, um, you know, there's a financial barrier to some places to ski. So a lot of our ski trails that are in parks across town, you do need the great Minnesota ski pass uh, to, to use those trails. I really encourage people to do that. That's how uh, a lot of them get maintained over the, uh, throughout uh, over the course of years. Um, we do have a couple intro classes. So if people have old skis that are laying around or like, oh, I wanted to get involved, but not really sure. Uh, we do offer a couple intro classes through Parks and Rec and some details of those are on our website. And I'm happy to answer any questions um, kind of via email or phone call or um, in the chat if people want more information on those. And then the last uh, activity that we have on this uh, page is called Agents of Discovery. So we started this last year. So Agents of Discovery, it's actually a mobile app on your phone. It's a, like an educational game on your phone that we use to um, kind of overlay different nature scavenger hunts on different parks all over Duluth all year round. So not the best winter thing. Hands get cold pretty quickly if you're on a device. Um, and batteries probably die pretty quickly, but something just to keep an eye out for. Uh, we move that around town and it's a great way for, uh, for parents or guardians or caregivers with, with young kids to get out um, and kind of, it'll kind of guide you through the park and lead you to different GPS points where there might be a little nature fact or there might be a little uh, matching activity about animal tracks. So just a way to connect people to our parks in a different way and provide a little, um, a little um, treasure hunt or nature detective aspect to a, a visit to either one of your favorite parks or it can help you get out to a new park that you haven't, aren't, haven't been to before. Jump to the next one, Andrea. Awesome. Uh, another event that we have coming up in a couple of weeks, which is a great way to get outside um, and follow some clues to so put on your detective hats, is uh, the Yeti Hunt is back for 2022. So this is an event we started this past winter or last winter. Uh, so we did a couple of these. So we have a giant, like five foot tall uh, Yeti cutout. So the same picture that's in that. Uh, graphic uh, that we hide in a park. And so starting on at 10 a.m. on Saturday, February 19th, on our Facebook and our Instagram, we'll release clues on the hour that will lead you to a city park and the location of our giant Yeti that'll be hidden. Um, and if you take a picture with or of the Yeti, submit it to us either via email or tag us on social media, you'll get put in a prize drawing, uh, which Typically the prizes are little like Yeti brand coffee mugs or some park swag and things like that. Uh, so we had a lot of people participate in that last year. It should be a lot of fun this year. Um, so stay tuned for that on February 19th. Uh, it's a great way. It's a pretty easy way to get outside for a couple hours. Um, the clues are pretty easy, you know, uh, for all ages. And so by the third or fourth clue, everyone will probably have pretty, pretty good idea to where to go, but it's a great excuse to, to uh, get up and out of the house on a Saturday afternoon. All right, I know I was talking about outdoor stuff, but as much as I like the outdoors, and as much as we're promoting the outdoors this winter, uh, some people aren't super fond of the outdoors and that's okay, but there's still lots of great ways to be active in the winter. So real quick plug on some indoor things. If you're like, yeah, Agents of, Disco Agents of Discovery sounds cold and the Yeti hunt sounds cold and snowshoeing sounds like a lot of work, that's okay. Uh, it's still important to be active in the winter. Um, and we have some, I, some ways to, to get some uh, energy and exercise in, uh, in indoor activities. And so a couple of things we have going on, we have a variety of archery classes that we do. Uh, so we have some intro classes. So those are for ages 10 and up. Once you do an intro class, you can join a beginner archery league. We're gonna have an archery tournament later this spring. Um, so a lot of fun to get uh, people of all ages above 10 out on the archery range, some for their first time or some people that have done archery a lot in their past. Um, for the little ones, ages zero through five, we have play gyms, so that's weekly from nine to 11 on Thursdays at Washington Center Gym. That's just a time to uh, run around and we need to put a bunch of different play equipment out. So just uh, a great chance if the weather's not nice outside to get inside uh, and get some energy out for those young ones. 
And then uh, ice skating, we have a lot of outdoor ice skating opportunities across town. We do still offer um, ice skating indoors at the Heritage Center a couple times a week. So some details here, or that's in our brochure as well. Um, so we do a Wednesday night skate, Sunday afternoon skate, and then a, a Tuesday morning skate. So a few different ways to, to continue to uh, pursue those activities uh, indoors. All right. Um, so a couple last things. This is pretty pretty quick, but just wanted to kind of get you uh, aware of different things that we offer, or or at least at the very least to know that we can be a resource to help you get introduced to, or exposed to, or connected with different opportunities and activities um, in the winter and also year round. Um, so just a quick reminder: our program guide, as well as it, information on our fee assistance program and our registration link is at duluthmn.gov slash parks. Uh, the registration site gets linked right from there, um, but um, just know that we're a resource and there's my contact information, email and phone number. Uh, feel free to contact me even if it's like, I wanna do this, but I have no idea where to start. Let me know, uh, either, I'll, either I'll know something about it or I will, we'll figure out who does and get you connected um, so that you can be uh, active and, and engaged in our parks and on our trails uh, all throughout the year. Um, I wasn't able to see the chat. Is, has anyone had any questions? Or does anyone have any questions right off the bat? Let's see, I don't see, we've been keeping some of these links populated here at, that have been mentioned in the chat. I don't see Perfect. any so far. We'll just uh, pause here a minute, see if Thank you for thank you for all this information and um, yes, great to have some indoor options as well. Uh, there are definitely days when being outside isn't quite as manageable for everybody. Yeah, and the biggest thing is uh, just to know that, you know, there's a lot of groups that have a lot of experience. So I'm sure you know a lot of the groups tied in with Winter Bike Week have have really a good wealth of knowledge in terms of biking. Um, oh, it looks like someone had something in the chat, but uh, I got yep. off my screen. Um, are there, I can read it here. Yep. So are there any ways to offer input on parks planning or programming? Yeah, so, so we are entering a parks master planning process um, right now. So we actually had a survey just earlier this, this winter and fall that made its way around. That was like a very large scale um, survey that we're, we're taking uh, feedback from that. But we're always looking for, um, for feedback from the community on uh, planning. And I guess I work in the programming side, so I'm, I'm, I'm biased that I would love to as much feedback as we can get on pr the programming side of things. But any of that can be sent to um, an email address is parks at DuluthMN.gov. Um, and that'll come into our office and get um, passed along to the most relevant contact. If it's something program related, it may come to uh, myself or a member of our team. If it's planning related, it'll get to, sent to that side of our office. But um, yeah, always looking for feedback on, um, on uh, ideas or input that the community has on a, a wide range of topics. I see another one here too um, regarding cross-country skis. Um, you mentioned that earlier, Sam. Uh, are they available for rent through the city? How would somebody go about finding those to use and are there adult and kid sizes available? Yeah, so we at Parks do not have our own cross-country skis. Um, we uh, do some programming with some youth skiing that utilizes some skis from some other programs and partnership. Um, there are a couple groups that do rent adult skis. I believe that Hartley Nature Center has uh, cross-country skis available for rent during certain times of their open hours. I believe that's typically on weekends. Um, another good resource is the rental center up at UMD. Um, so UMD's campus has a rental center with a lot of outdoor gear. They have a they have adult cross country skis, um, and there's probably multiple other that I can follow up with more information on um, specifically specifically for rentals. Um, and so, I guess I can't see who said that, but I can follow up if more information is needed. But those are kind of the main two that jump to mind right away. Yeah. 
looks like might be the extent of our of our questions right now. Um, just as a reminder, we will share this video online after uh, after we get it processed. So you'll be able to reference it again, as well as the links that Sam mentioned to help connect either with him with questions. Thank you for that offer and sharing your information, as well as some direct links to the, the different programs and the map of the park system and so forth. Any other uh, comments or questions from um, either anyone in the audience or, or Sam, any last thoughts here? Um, I don't have anything else right now. Thanks again for letting us be a part of this. And uh, yeah, I encourage anyone that's watching this to check out all the other events for Winter Bike Week that are happening this week um, and use those use those as kind of inspiration to, to find new ways to, to get outside and, and enjoy our, our city year round, even when it's maybe a little dark and cold. It can still be super fun. Well, we appreciate the plug for that, Sam, and certainly are grateful that you're here today sharing this information, but even more so that you are day in and day out keeping these programs running and finding ways to like best serve the community and, and get people active in all seasons. So thank you so much um, for being here. Appreciate everyone who is able to join today and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you at some of our future Winter Bike Week events or out in the park system. Have a good night, everyone. All right. Thanks, everyone. Feel free to reach out with questions.